Okay, we're all, we're up and running. Hello everyone, thank you for joining us for Pearl Planning's Retirement Readiness in Times of Uncertainty webinar. Today is August 5th, 2020. And I am uh, Melissa Fravenberg, Financial Advisor with Pearl Planning in our Rose Point office. And our other speaker today is Melissa Joy, Certified Financial Planner and Founder of Pearl Planning. Hi, Melissa. Hi, how are you doing? Great. So today we are going to talk about what is retirement, as well as the current retirement crisis as it relates to market volatility and um, COVID-19. Then the meat of our presentation is going to be about the steps to retirement readiness, both um, financially as well as just life factors and how we analyze it all to determine that retirement readiness. We're also going to open it up at the end for Q&A. If you have questions throughout the presentation, you can email them as we go to melissa at pearlplan.com. And then we're gonna share with you a few additional resources and some next steps as far as figuring out your specific retirement readiness. And um, with that, I'm gonna turn it over to Melissa Joy and start it off. Great. Well, I always like to talk about an analogy of the river and the pond or lake when I think about retirement. Because so many people have anxiety about the what's and the how's of retirement. And I think they're related to this concept. When you are in your working career, you know that your cash flow is kind of a renewable resource. So it's similar to a river where you kind of pick up money that you spend along the way. Hopefully you save some as well. But you know, every year is a new year where you can earn additional money. And so that kind of seasonality of the renewable resource of the river, the money's always flowing through your life. But there is a mind shift, um, a mindset change or a shift that occurs when you retire because that renewable stream of income turns into kind of a pond where you've gathered assets. And some people really think, you know, okay, this is, this is the exact amount of money I'm going to have for the rest of my life. How do I divide it up by 20 or 30 years, however long I plan to live? That's how, you know, I will, I will make my plans for retirement. We think that it's more fluid um, in retirement. You still have many years that you'll be an investor or that you'll need to kind of go through the ups and downs of the world and markets. Um, but it is, a, I think, a good kind of comparison that now you're in a, you know, kind of a contained body of water that you need to take care of and maintain, you know, kind of healthy standards for your money. So we are here to help you navigate from that transition from the stream to the pond. So when you think about retirement today, the first thing I think about is demographics. So we have people that are healthier and living longer, especially if they are wealthier, which is typically the people that we're speaking with. Um, you know, there are different kind of assumptions on how long you'll be living if you are, you know, retiring today versus 10 or 20 years ago. So we always make an assumption that our clients, if they're a, a married couple, will both live to age 95. Um, and we'll probably be extending those life expectancies even further down the road. The road. This year specifically, though, retirement assumptions have been turned on their head. I've spoken with so many clients and just people in general who were in their 50s and 60s, had a game plan for when they were going to retire, were really aiming for a particular date in the future. And because of their work circumstances, their comfort and safety in the workplace, they just scrapped those plans and are making plans to retire right away. So that is specific to this year. And maybe some of those people will re-enter the workplace when there's more clarity about the future or they feel safer. But I, you know, in actuality, many of them may not. And the reality is that for many Americans, regardless of pandemic or not, they have one game plan for when they think they may retire and they end up retiring a little bit earlier than that. We also have those stragglers who just love to work. And what I like to tell them is I'd love to tell them that they are able to retire anytime, not that they have to retire or, you know, this is how much they can have, but then they can call their own shots. 
So obviously this year is very particular in terms of why people are changing their outlook or estimates for retirement. And as I mentioned, um, about 75% of retirees have that old date from Social Security of age 65, which is also when Medicare happens to start, is going to be the date that they retire. But in actuality, the median age for retirement is age 62. So there's a discrepancy between expectations and other and what actually happens. Um, and you know, you are you're unique, and your personal experience will be um, your own. But this is just an example of what we see in generally across the population. Now, why might that change and where, why is there uncertainty? First of all, health issues, um, a change to an investment outlook if there's a particularly good year, concerns about receiving social security later in life. And these also go hand in hand with the areas of uncertainty to knowing that you're going to be okay in retirement. What we always say as financial planners is that we'll plan for what we know now. And then if you have a solid, foundational plan, then when the world changes, you can adjust your plan accordingly. So that's kind of what we'll be discussing here in this presentation. So I always like to set a framework with people that are approaching retirement about what we see analytically about how your spending occurs in retirement. And I'd like to start with the concept of the retirement smile. Um, there are three kind of phases to this retirement smile. There are the go-go years where you hopefully are living your fullest life. You perhaps have that retirement bucket list, um, whether it's travel or big projects and you're really taking them on. These might be fuller spending years. Then there's the slower go years where maybe you wanna stay closer to home. You're not quite as ambitious on your spending, but hopefully you're in great health and um, you know you, your, your life just, your needs get a little bit smaller. Um, and then there's the no-go years. Those are years where you may be at end of life. There are higher needs and um, because of health costs and needs and you may, might need additional care. Well, that turns into the smile because those go-go years are high spending perhaps or higher spending. Um, the slower go years are lower spending and then the smile comes back up on the other end on those no-go years where you may have additional healthcare costs. So the way that we consider that in our financial planning analysis and assumptions um, is a little bit different. First, I explain what, the what we're seeing in the world, the demographics. Then we just naturally, financial planning software, everybody's different first and financial planning software doesn't allow for that dip in the slower go here. So we talk about that and I may, I may allow people to spend a little bit more earlier in the years as we discuss, you know, kind of your natural plan and phase. Maybe you have two homes in the earlier years in retirement, but you have a solid game plan to sell that second home at some point when you consolidate down or, or downsize. Um, we also make assumptions about nursing care that you will have extra needs toward the end of life, ages 94 and 95, if we're using those <laughs> uh, retirement assumptions that we discussed already. Well here, so th this kind of concept is a concept that was um, pulled together by a financial planner, Michael Stein, in a con a, um, article called The Prosperous Retirement. What is actually happening? Can we confirm that that is how people are spending in retirement? This chart has numbers that come from Chase um, that are looking at people's, the, it doesn't know the individuals, but it's looking at a large group of people's bank records. So Chase is analyzing how spending is happening for people that have what they think is a net worth around a million dollars over time. And you can see in the 40s and 50s are the highest spending stage. Likely there's more debt. They're paying for kids to go to college. Also, they um, may be traveling more. They have higher work expenditures. And what we can see in reality is that people's expenditures tend to decline over time. And so I always think it's important when you, you know, plug numbers into a retirement calculator, this is some of the value of working with a financial planner, is we can really talk about what trends are occurring in the world. Now, your own case may be different. So we really want to be careful to say, what is your spending in the early years of retirement? And we can understand that both from budget, how, um, much you're withdrawing from your investment portfolio, et cetera. The review each year will be helpful, but it, I think it's valid and informative information that while your healthcare costs may be going up, a lot of other costs, entertainment, travel, et cetera, tend to decline as you get older. 
I'll, I'll send it back to you, Melissa, so you can talk a little bit about how you figure out how much income you need during retirement. Great. Well, as Melissa just talked about, over time, we see that often um, spending does go down. But what about that initial retirement income replacement? How much income are you going to need when you retire? And I would say that's one of the top five questions I get when meeting with clients um, is trying to figure that out. So in this example here, we've taken 150,000 in income. And just to show you what that replacement might look like and some of the things that you may not be paying for even in that initial uh, part of retirement. So if you've been putting money away, which oftentimes we see people before retirement really stocking away money in their retirement plans or IRAs. So in this assumption, we're looking at 6% is what they were putting away. So about 9,000 a year towards retirement savings that once you retire, you're no longer putting away. Um, and as Melissa showed those expenditures going down, so that might be travel, gas, um, clothing, certain items that when you retire, you're not going to be purchasing, reduction another 8%. Again, just an estimate, but also taxes will be reduced. If you have lower earned income, you're going to have less taxes. So right off the bat with those three things coming out, you're looking at a 74% replacement rate for that income. And then you can add in social security. Again, very individualized in this example, we're using 36,500 a year, which brings that replacement to about 50% of income to maintain that equivalent lifestyle right off the bat in retirement. But each case is different and individualized. So really have to look at the different factors that go into your particular case. And again, when people come to us, oftentimes they have a good idea, sometimes they don't, of where they are at today, right now, a snapshot in time. And some even have an idea of a number in their head that they need to get to to retire, or maybe they used a retirement calculator online. But really where financial planning comes in is that how do we get there, that middle part, because that is always the part that's a little bit foggy when we meet with people as far as here I am, this is where I wanna to get to, how do I get there? And that really is the process um, or the end goal of financial planning is really to have that all mapped out. And then as Melissa mentioned, that we are able to make adjustments along the way. So let's look at some of the assumptions or factors that go into each case of you know, how we do get there. So life expectancy. Again, right now we're looking at uh, using a life expectancy with our clients of 95. So if people are retiring at 62 to 65, that's 30 years of income that you're going to need to replace in retirement. So that is a big factor. Income sources. Do you have a pension? Um, we're seeing that less and less, but there are still people that have pension income. Uh, are you gonna work part-time or have some source of income in retirement? Uh, or social security, what does that income look like for your social security estimate statements? That's a big factor that we look at. As far as investment returns, obviously no one knows, we don't have a crystal ball, so we don't know what those returns look like in the future, but we can come up with a pretty good idea based on historical returns as well as your individual risk tolerance. So really that number that we use when we plug that in does depend specifically on um, what your risk profile looks like. Then of course, we need to know what assets you have. So that would include your 401ks, IRAs, any CDs or brokerage accounts, as well as um, equity in your home. And lastly, financial needs. So are you going to downsize? What does your retirement look like? Are you gonna sell your home? Are you gonna buy a second home? Maybe buy a condo in Florida. Um, what are those fixed expenses and then those wants? And um, really by talking about what your retirement looks like, we'll get an idea of what your financial needs and how much income you're going to need throughout your retirement period. Some other factors to consider when thinking about what you'll need for retirement. Inflation. So we use a number in the high twos when we're doing our uh, financial plans, and that is slightly higher than what inflation has been over the last 10 years or so. 
However, again, if you're going to be 30 years into retirement, you have to factor in that that purchasing power, $150,000 in income today, will not buy the same in 20 years from now or so. So we do factor that in. Another factor is taxes. Do you think taxes are going up or do you think taxes are going down? Now, as I mentioned, oftentimes with lower earned income, your particular tax rate may go down, but overall, if taxes do go up, that is something we have to take into consideration, as well as those income sources. Are you taking tax-free income in retirement or is it going to be taxable? And then healthcare, which Melissa touched on, that's a huge factor in retirement. And when we talk about inflation, the historical healthcare inflation is about, is slightly higher than 6%, which is huge. So if you think about those later years where your healthcare costs go up and um, being that healthcare is one of the things that does not go down in retirement as far as spending, that's a huge factor as well as that gap between when you retire, if you retire at 62 um, before you're eligible for Medicare at 65, how are we going to fill that gap and how are we going to pay for that? Market conditions, again, we've seen a lot of volatility back in March. That was a huge um, wake up call for people who were thinking about retiring in the next few years after we saw the longest bull run, bull run market in history. However, we have had a nice recovery, but volatility is something that is most likely here to stay. So it is something that we need to look at when we look at your retirement picture. And then stability of income. Again, do you have pension income? Uh, is that pension stable? Is that something we can count on? Social security. For people retiring now, that's a huge part of their retirement. For people that are under age 40, oftentimes we don't know what that's gonna look like for them in another 20 years. So that is another factor when it comes to retirement. So I'd like to give you some visualizations about how you can map out retirement. What I have found, I just described to you a bunch of people who have been uncertain about retirement or completely changed their retirement plan and dates, is that once you have a solid financial plan, you have much more capability of making adjustments. You can see your future, you know what you need to work on or work toward. You can also alleviate a lot of anxiety. What we found in studies, and particularly a JP Morgan survey from 2018, is that only about 45% of those age 55 plus are confident in their knowledge of whether or not they're saving enough. Now that is exactly what a retirement plan should be able to tell you. Not only are you on the right track, but how can you get there? And then that knowledge gap, if you're younger and listening to this presentation, I think that's fantastic because less than 40% of those under age 55 were comfortable knowing that they were saving enough to really have a solid financial plan. What I hear time and again from people when they come in to meet with me is, I just don't think I'm doing enough. I'm not sure, but I'm also a little bit, you know, kind of uncomfortable having this conversation. And once we get into the nuts and bolts and can have some actionable kind of results of what we're going to be working on and also where you're doing a great job, then that anxiety is alleviated and you have a more proactive kind of constructive approach to how you can see your future retirement. So first, um, retirement planning is all about probabilities because Melissa just described 10 or 12 things that are going are volatile can change in retirement that we just don't know. So we go with the best information that we have right now. We put in your circumstances and your needs. And some of those are pretty concrete. Like if you have a mortgage and you're planning on living in your house for the foreseeable future, we know when that mortgage will be paid off. We know what the taxes may be that will be ongoing. So we can hardwire in those specifics rather than just having kind of a bulk sum of here's how much you have. Um, we can get really specific to your personal life. So we put in all your details and what we think you'll have and when we think you may retire. And we might be running several scenarios if you're like, I'd like to see the difference between retiring at 63 and 66 um, so that you can kind of give yourself the encouragement to keep working or say, oh, it's okay for me to, um, you know, pull off the gas and work less. Um, so we end up with a probability of success number. And for those of you who are overachievers, this is one of the only times that you don't necessarily want to get 100% A plus on your probability of success. Why, you may ask, would you not? Well, a probability of success is, to get a little bit technical, 
um, run off of a Monte Carlo simulation. And a Monte Carlo statistical analysis is where you run a bunch of different projections with a different sequence of returns. So Melissa just described to you that we do make some assumptions about what investment returns may be. But what we don't assume is that if your assumed rate of return is 6%, that you'll get 6% every single year because that's just too easy and it would make it really easy for you to be okay in retirement. The reality is, you know, last year was up maybe 20%. This year at one point was down almost 20%. Right now it's kind of flat. You can never tell, but you're not going to hit that mark of your average return every year. That would be returns with no volatility. So if we map out a sequence of returns, we can forecast that perhaps you have retire in 2007 where you have the Great Recession right after that. Or perhaps you retire in the early 80s where there's really strong kind of um, winds that help you with economic growth. We just don't know. So we want to get in the percent probability of success between 75 and 85 percent. And what happens if you're super, super high at that 90 or 100 percent is that we may be suggesting that you're too conservative in terms of your spending in retirement. So once we, um, and if you are too low, it's just too risky. Um, you don't have the ability to kind of pivot your plan or adjust it if market conditions change. It's, it's kind of like you price your plan to perfection. And what we all know is life has bumps along the road. Okay, so we're gonna put in all of your specific information as well as what we know about the world around us and come up with that probability of success. Then we look at your individual circumstances too and plan to maximize the possibilities. So one prime example would be tax considerations. Um, once you reach age 72, many of you will have to start taking money out of your retirement plans. Um, that's when a required distribution comes into play with new, uh, with the SECURE Act. And um, before then, and even especially before you hit, you know, kind of Medicare age or start to receive Social Security, we may be able to play around with things and take money out of your retirement plans or convert them to Roth assets when you have a lower income. So we're always going to try to capitalize on just individual opportunities that are based specifically for you. We'll also analyze your Social Security or your pension if you have one. If you're fortunate enough to have one, it's great when you have a pension um, to choose when to claim it and how to make your decisions. Um, and you may think you know what your spending is going to be in retirement, but it's really critical too in those first couple of years during retirement to understand what your spending is. And even in the last years prior to retirement, I often sometimes see people walk in the door, they're planning to retire like tomorrow. And there's like, here's my stuff, I'm ready to start financial planning. That's great, I'm glad they called me today versus five years into retirement, but it's even better if you can have that financial plan in advance. And let's say that, you know, when Melissa described the income replacement, that you really have just been saving your 401k contribution and your income's gone up and up um, and, you know, the reality is you have a lot to spend in retirement, but you may not have as much as your current lifestyle. It just depends on your own personal habits. I know some people that can retire with half a million dollars and be in great shape and others, there's no amount that's enough. And it's all about your spending habits as well as what you've been able to save. But of course, those go hand in hand in many cases where, you know, if you're not saving money or spending it, which just increases your kind of dependency on a certain lifestyle. So we want you to be flexible with that spending plan. And the earlier we can talk about, you know, kind of your spending behaviors, the more we can kind of build in without a lot of pain, some ways to adjust or kind of pay yourself first with savings. And then finally, we want you to be reviewing this annually. So when people come to us in their 30s and 40s and want to be thinking about good sound financial practices, the annual like revisit to the retirement plan is saying, hey, we just boosted your probability of success or increased the amount you can spend in retirement. So it's kind of like, am I doing better than last year seeing that incremental improvement? If you're coming and you're in retirement or you're about to be in retirement, it's a little bit different. We're making sure that your spending behavior that is um, you know, on track, we're adjusting based on the market conditions, we're changing when tax rules change, all of those things. Um, I always like to say that a financial plan or a retirement plan is not something to be kind of done and then put on a shelf and kind of getting dusty. You want it to be a working kind of concept and document or um, you know, concept, I think is a better way to say it because it's not a piece of paper. It's like a 
a plan for your life. So think about it like um, an architect has a blueprint. Your blueprint may need to be adjusted over time and that annual revisit gives you enough time to see both concerns ahead, also identify opportunities. So that's kind of how we suggest people work on this. And that's what exactly what we do. We use a comb combination of um, kind of teaching um, like we talked about how much people typically spend over time and very technical analytical financial planning software, as well as our own wisdom, having worked with people and helping them retire over the years to kind of get you to the, their goal. There's a science as well as an art to financial planning. And one of the critical things is kind of having a relationship with you where once you can be comfortable with the technical side, like how is the money going to be deposited in my account? How am I going to replace my paycheck? Then we want you to be thinking, what does retirement look like for you? And this isn't the dollars and the cents. This is like, how are you spending your time? Especially if you've been a busy executive or a harried mom, you know, running the kids around, what is meaningful to you? What is your purpose in retirement? How do you feel comfortable? We want that to be what you're focusing on because you have that retirement game plan that you'll continue to revisit but you really get, you know, kind of your basic financial needs met for retirement. So you can start dreaming about what your life looks like. The reality is not everybody's sitting on the beach, walking along the beach every day in retirement. So you need to kind of evaluate what's going to give you fulfillment and what you want to be doing. So what's the recipe for success? I think we've kind of alluded to it, but I want to really hammer this um, so that you understand very clearly what we think and see for people who are successful in retiring. First, as soon as possible, um, there is no time like the present, prepare or update your retirement plan. So do that now. Um, if you kind of knew you needed to get started on financial planning or retirement plan, there is no time like the present. And if you had a plan, but life has changed as it does, let's update that retirement plan. Um, also, especially if you're getting ready to retire, be prepared to be flexible. That's what 2020 has taught us, right? I think 2020 is a lesson we would have never chosen. Of course, we would have never chosen to sign up for on resilience, um, but the most successful retirement plan that is one that is built to be flexible. Um, update your information annually. Once you get started, don't let it drop. If you work with a financial planner, you'll know that there's effective ways. They'll keep you proactive if you're working with a good financial planner. They'll remind you when it's time to schedule a meeting. And don't neglect the personal side of your preparation, the what am I doing in retirement, what drives me, as well as the financial pre preparations. I think, you know, especially if you're a technical person, it's easy to get into a spreadsheet to make sure you have enough, um, but it's more difficult to really understand how you'll spend your time. And for really driven people who retire, I find, you know, sometimes there's a little bit of a hangover or a time of depression as they're kind of um, emerging into their new world where they need to redefine their purpose. But if you can follow those kind of steps, whether you're pre-retirement or at retirement or even in retirement, we think that that's the recipe for success. Rinse and repeat, focus on your process, have a flexible plan. So I want to leave some room for questions and um, there is no question that is, you know, inappropriate. I think a lot of people fit, assume that everybody else knows the answers for investing in retirement and they're just out of the loop. But what we told you with those numbers from that survey is you are in good company if you're not quite sure what retirement looks like. So how can we clarify with you? So I apologize that we, that we can't use a traditional Q&A function, but um, if you send an email to me at melissa at pearlplan.com right now, and I'm refreshing my emails as we speak to see if there, any of them are coming in, we will be happy to answer those questions. Melissa, anything you would add to the conversation? Um, no, I do think that last point about revisiting what your idea of retirement is so important. I know um, I'm not near retirement right now at age 40, but if I think back just even 10 years ago at age 30, um, I was just had little babies and I wasn't even thinking about retirement. But when I did think about it, my idea of my ideal retirement has changed drastically over the last 10 years. So I can only imagine 20, 30 years from now what that might look like. And I think that is important for 
both people to think about what their own desires are, as well as couples uh, to discuss with each other to make sure you're on the same page of what that retirement looks like. So I had to laugh um, earlier this year, I talked with a young newly married couple. They may have even, maybe they're just engaged right now. They're in their twenties and they talked about um, their wonderful savers, really, um, really fun to work with. And, you know, they were like, I, we will never have a lifestyle that spends more than X amount of money. That's just not us. And the reality is, A, that might be true, but also it's really difficult to, you have no idea how much you change over time. Or if you're in a, um, a relationship, how much you and your partner change. And some of that is possibilities. Some of that is um, exploring what contentment is to you and, you know, what, um, what is meaningful to you. Um, but we like to not, you know, we're not about excess, but I love giving clients permission to pursue the dreams. Um, so sometimes it's just being a conversation partner. I can think of a client during um, COVID-19, right before everything went down, she was looking at buying a third horse. So she is, uh, has been retired for 15 or 20 years. Um, but she's an equestrian and she's a widow, um, but the horse brings her a lot of personal, horses bring her a lot of personal satisfaction. They're a big part of her life. And the ability to give permission to say, this totally fits within your financial plan. That to me is um, one of my favorite things to do is it's not about doing everything, but it's about permission to do the most important things to you, for you. Agreed. So I'm not, let me do one more refresh, but I'm not seeing any questions as if you're listening to the replay of this, which many of our listeners do though, feel free to email myself um, or we'll, we'll provide Melissa's contact information as well so that you can follow up with a question in the future. Oh, I do have a question. Okay. So does it make sense to invest money that has been saved from a gift into real estate? It would not touch work 403B or my Roth IRA? So I think this is a really interesting question, Melissa. Um, when you receive a gift, there's something like kind of attached to that money for many people. Like maybe something came from your grandmother and it has a special, you know, place for them. I, I talk about this often when people receive stock in an inheritance or as a gift. Um, so there's not only the asset, but there's also the connotation of that gift. Um, in my experience, you should think about things two ways. How do you approach the gift and what does it mean to you? And you, you might have some sort of policy there about the purpose. Um, and then additionally, you know, um, is what is, if you're looking at real estate or any type of major purchase, is it financially sound? How do things fit in? What could go wrong, as, et cetera. But I love the idea if you receive gifts of using them. I hope that's why people give gifts. You know, parents sometimes give gifts to their adult children within their lifetimes so that they can see that money spent or use it in a time where they may need the money more than they will as they mature more. Um, so I always encourage people to not just think about a gift as something they need to tuck away and kind of, you know, put on a mantle to admire, but really use it. Um, hopefully the, pur the intended purpose was for, um, to, to use. And so then it gets back into, you know, what are the implications and, um, you know, would I have the taxes be bigger? Do I have the funds to sustain things otherwise, which is something we do day in, day out. What would you say, Melissa? I agree. Yeah, I, I think certainly, um, I think the question being, should I use it for real estate? One thing with real estate to think about is, is this going to be your primary residence? What uh, are the maintenance fees or the taxes, the ongoing fees? So if you use this lump sum gift to purchase real estate, do you have the assets without tapping into assets that are earmarked for other things to maintain the property? for the real estate? Are, is this going to be an investment real estate where you're renting it out? And what does that look like? And what kind of rental income? So there's just so many factors. It would be really hard to answer that question specifically, but it's certainly something to consider. Yeah, so we can definitely get into specifics if you wanna follow up. I know who asked the question, so I can follow up with her. Okay. Um, also, we have an additional resource for you, a 
retirement checklist that you can go through and really think about your own personal situation. And if you would like to look at this to get some more ideas of what you should con consider before you retire, you can email us again, melissa at pearlclan.com and we will send this to you. And you can also email Melissa Friedenberg. Here's her email address as well. Yes, and uh, it is confusing sometimes. We do communicate. <laughs> so if you mean to contact one of us and you accidentally uh, email Melissa Joy, we will figure it out. But if you'd like to reach me, I'm located in the Girls Point office and my last name is in my email. So it's melissa.freidenberg at pearlplan.com. But you can also just go to our website at www.pearlplan.com. You can schedule a, a call or meeting with us right there directly on the website, as well as find some additional resources to figure out your retirement readiness and see some of our upcoming events that we have on the calendar. And um, we don't have the dates on there yet, but please do check back because we have a webinar coming up on social security as well as Medicare, which if you're on this webinar, those are two topics that would be very relevant to your situation as well. And we hope that you will join us. Also, I wanna mention this is being recorded today. So if you found this information helpful and there are other people uh, friends or family that you feel would benefit, please do share that with them. Or if you just want to check back and listen to it again um, to make sure that you have everything covered, please do that as well. And uh, we really appreciate you joining us for this webinar today. Thank you. Thanks so much.